Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Please let me know if you can hear me okay, if you can see me okay. I'm worried about the internet connection <laughs> dropping again today. But welcome. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia and the School of Sweet Georgia. And today we're going to do our live office hours. This is December. This is the last live office hours that we are going to do this year. Crazy, right? <laughs> Yeah, everybody's talking in the chat about how we are. We're one month away from 2023. It is snowing outside in Vancouver. This is really unusual for Vancouver. Vancouver does not know how to handle life when it snows. Um, I've actually just gotten back from <laughs> holidays and uh, where it was really wonderful and warm and came back and was like, what? It's going to snow? <laughs> I'm not ready for this at all. But yeah, this is fantastic. This is December. This is a real time of year where I, I've discovered that I, I've already begun uh, not entirely hibernating, but I'm very much in the mode of reflecting on the year. And so today, this, this conversation today is going to be um, very much about kind of like a end of year review, reflection, that kind of thing. Um, so really looking at what have you learned? How much have you grown? That sort of thing. And so I find like this is actually really easy when I look at my kids. I can see how much they have grown in a year because their clothes don't fit anymore. Their shoes are too small, just things like that. It's it's easy to see kids growing up, but it's much harder for us as grown-ups to see how much we have grown in a year. And so I think it's always really helpful to look back and see what have you done this past year at, in order to really appreciate how much you've learned and how much you've changed. I know like for myself, I find it hard to believe like there's a stack of samples that have been sitting on the shelf behind me. And I just, I picked them up to look at them this morning. And I was like, oh, at this time last year, I was working on twill gamps. I was weaving this on the mirror loom, making this entire thing. This was one of my twill gamps. This one was a wool one that I wove. I was weaving twill gamps out of bamboo. There's actually two of them connected. That's what this thing is, but they are two twill gamps that I wove in succession. Um, yeah, that's what I was working on in December, January of last year. There's another twill gamp. I also had started learning about overshot. And so these are my very, very first experiences with overshot weaving. So doing that last year. And then in the fall of last year and then into January, I was learning to weave, um, double weave on eight shafts. And I took that with a course with uh, Jennifer Moore. She wrote the book on double weave. It's a fantastic, amazing book. Um, and her workshop is fantastic too. And so this is kind of the project that I wove off. I never actually showed the whole thing, I think. But this is all of the color experiments that I did. And then I learned to weave it as rep weave. And then I started making little longer stripes and playing with a lot of design and color. And this was just all super fun and wonderful. But this is what I was working on last year. And so think about what do you know now that you didn't know last year? What do you know how to do now that you didn't know how to do last year? And so we're going to talk a little bit more about sort of the end of the year review and stuff like that. And also today, since we didn't get a chance to share many of the projects um, at last month's live office hours, uh, we're going to do a little bit of sharing as well today. So I can show you some of the projects that have been posted inside the school forums is amazing. You guys are amazing. You guys are making beautiful things, inspiring things. I always love going into the forums and seeing what everybody is posting. Really just every time I see something I'm like, oh, I want to make that. <laughs> so that that has been super fun. Today, we also have a question that I got emailed and it's about weaving drafts and uh, twill and working with rising shed looms and sinking shed looms. So I think that one could be really, really helpful to talk about today as well. And also, if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat and I will try to answer them in the Q&A section that we do. Um, and I will try to <laughs> scroll through the chat to make sure I got everybody's question and everything. So you can just pop those into the chat as we do the Q&A. So let's talk about what we're going to talk about today and go here. So today, this is kind of what I put together for like a very quick agenda, but I'm just going to talk about the upcoming content that we have in the school. I'm going to talk about upcoming events, uh, talk a little bit about the community forums. We're going to do that little sort of end of the year review. 
and then do some Q&A time and finally sharing what you guys have posted in the community forums, which has been absolutely wonderful and amazing. So for upcoming content, we have a lot of things and I do want to preface this by saying that I'm going to be talking about crochet stuff and weaving stuff, but that does not mean that there's not other stuff coming as well. We also have a lot of spinning stuff that's been happening. In fact, we just uh, a couple of weeks ago recorded a new course that's going to come out later next year in 2023 and it's with Kim McKenna and it's a very interesting class that um, actually uh, Greta had, I no, actually Kim Kim proposed and Greta like expanded on this idea to produce a class that was Kim McKenna, um, who you know from working with Fleece, eh, of course, and she's also taught the nuances of spinning better yarns. But she um, takes somebody who has not ever spun before on a spinning wheel. Um, she's only done drop spindle before. She's taken one student who's never touched a spinning wheel, one student who's been working with a spinning wheel for about a year, and then another student who's been working with a spinning wheel for a number of years, probably like five to eight years. And so three different spinning students at three different levels and working with each one of them to find out what the individual needs are for each student. And so that's one of the classes that we have been um, filming. Uh, but otherwise, I have other classes that I want to share with you guys. So just two days ago, this past week, Tuesday, we filmed Charlotte's class um, and it is all about crocheting granny squares. So I don't know if you can see, it's very, very, very in the corner here. Maybe you could see, no. In behind Charlotte <laughs> in the photograph, you can see that there are some projects there. So there is a granny square pillow there. There's a granny square blanket. She's made actually two pillows. And also there's another one that is a headband, a granny square headband. And so Charlotte has really, really taken off with a lot of making our crochet content. So she already has a crochet basics class. We also have an increases and decreases class, which has just launched. And so you can find that the link is here. It's available. What I'm doing right now is um, with all of the live office hours, I'm trying to prepare all of the links ahead of time and we're going to put them into a document so that way when you go and reference all of this stuff that I talk about later, you can just click directly on all of the links that I have listed in here. And so you don't have to hunt and peck for all of these things. All of the links will be in that document. So um, this is her latest course, Crochet Increases and Decreases, and it includes the Yona Cowl pattern. So the Yona Cowl pattern is a pattern that was released a number of years ago uh, through Sweet Georgia, but now that pattern has been made available for all school members. So you can go and download that. And so while I was on holiday this time, I only took one single project, and that was the Yona Cowl crochet project. Um, and I, I crocheted that on the airplane and just learning about how to do increases and decreases. I, I feel like I know how to crochet, but I don't know really how to read patterns very well. I, there's a lot of things that I could definitely improve on in, in crochet. And so I was using um, Charlotte's pattern to really help me with that process. So that pattern is really lovely. It's easy. It's easier than you think. And so I encourage you guys to go check out that crochet class. Um, we're also starting to do these things where about a month or so after each of these courses launch, we'll do a crafternoon session or like a Zoom session with the instructor. So that way you have a chance to actually meet Charlotte and chat with her and ask her all of your crochet questions. And so all of that is going to be happening there. So granny squares are a really 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 simple and wonderful way to get into crocheting and so uh <laughs> i have been going a little bit down this crochet rabbit hole and i'll talk about that more in another in another session where uh, i'll talk about some of the crochet hooks that i've been experimenting with and trying so charlotte gave me some to borrow i've been practicing and playing with those and uh yeah there's lots of things to discover about crochet hooks as well so that is the crochet side of things, definitely growing on the school platform. We're going to be doing more and more crochet as time comes. The next thing is weaving classes and weaving content with Laura Fry, who is a master weaver as designated by the Guild of Canadian Weavers. She is uh, the, the instructor who has taught us the... Um, the intentional weaver course. She taught us the magic in the water for wet finishing for hand wovens class. And um, 
She's been doing a number of lectures for us every month. So uh, she has been delivering lectures that are uh, we're posting on uh, on the school forums uh, on the school platform right now. So you can go back and rewatch all of the lectures that she's presented thus far. But she has one that has recently come out, and that was the drafts and drafting one. I feel like I've mentioned this before. I think that the drafts and drafting lecture is very very important. I feel like knowing how weaving drafts work it completely unlocks the the whole process of weaving and how weave structures work like it unlocks everything if you understand the weaving draft and so laura goes through all of that in that lecture i i highly encourage you guys to check that one out um the next one that laura is going to be doing is going to be january the 4th so right after the start of the new year january the 4th it's on a wednesday we've been doing them all on wednesdays and that one is about form follows function and so that one will very much be you know uh, discussions about like making the appropriate kind of cloth for the projects that you need like if you're going to make a dish towel a kitchen dish towel would you make it out of wool would you make it out of silk <laughs> if you're going to make a scarf would you make it out of blah 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 how would you set it like all of those kinds of decisions uh they they about the kind of yarn that you use the kind of set that you use colors drape all of those kinds of things are going to be related to what the purpose of the cloth is going to be so there's going to be a lot of conversation about that kind of thing if you would like to attend you can click on that link that's going to be in the in the notes um that will send you to the calendar event which will show you the zoom link that you would sign in on and uh it's helpful for us if you um if you are svp so we know how many people are coming the next one that we have coming actually launching today is amanda wood's class on lace with pickup sticks with the rigid heddle so amanda wood has been teaching a number of rigid heddle weaving classes for us since last year She's been teaching many of the rigid heddle classes. And so this one I think is fantastic because it just kind of like breaks um, the, out of the boundary of working with just plain weave on a rigid heddle loom. Now by adding a pickup stick, um, you can pick up just certain warp threads, but not all warp threads. And so that way you can create texture in your cloth. And so the scarf that she's holding up here is absolutely gorgeous this one that she's woven and designed um that one is uh woven up in just duet which is the uh, linen and cotton blend yarn it's really lovely that color is called pear and it's like this beautiful appley green color or pear green color and the texture of it is like these windows it's lacy windows and it's something that you would never imagine came off of a rigid head loom but it's gorgeous and so that is available today the pattern is available to download um, and you can definitely watch her weave with these pickup sticks it's mesmerizing to watch and I think easier than you think uh, it could be so yeah I encourage you guys to check that one out um, the next one is my double weave on four shafts class coming in two weeks. Leah is editing that one right now, but a couple of weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, we did the weaving calculations meeting. And so that was just me getting on zoom and doing sort of a casual, um, conversation with people about how I did the calculations for the projects that were used in that course, because I ran through a number of different options and ideas for the projects for the double weave class and taking into consideration you know how many skeins of yarn trying to minimize yarn but trying to maximize the use of all of that yarn so a lot of considerations like that so you can take a look at the conversation that we had um, about yarn calculations that is available and it's posted already in the course and also there's a link to the google sheet and so the google sheet is kind of like um it's it, it calculates everything for you you kind of pop in a, num a couple of numbers and it will generate for you how many warp ends you need to make um all of these kinds of things like how much yarn you need calculates how much total yardage you need um, how many skeins you might need and if you pop in the cost per skein then you'll have an idea of roughly how much your entire project will cost so i use this exact calculator this exact google sheet for 
every single weaving project I ever make. And so this is something that I encourage you guys to also kind of adopt and use. So when you go to the Google Sheet link, there will be instructions. You just make a copy of it into your own uh, Google account, and then you can do whatever you want with it, expand it, build it, make as many pages as you like, duplicate it, whatever you want to do with that. Um, and so that is that is something I encourage you guys to do. And then again, like I said, a month after the class launches, we're going to do this kind of Q&A Zoom meetup. And so the one that is with me about the double weave is scheduled for January the 18th on a Wednesday. That's that one. In terms of upcoming events, I wanted to share with you guys, please come and join us on Monday, December the 12th. It's going to be at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and this is our annual holiday crafter noon. It's just a very, very casual meetup on a Monday where we can all get together and just kind of like decompress for the holidays. <laughs> just spend some time together making things and we're going to have some giveaways during that time of course and that will be really really lots of fun. But we did this last year and it's just nice because like a lot of the people from the Sweet Georgia team will join in on that call and so I absolutely welcome you to come out and hang out, bring your project, bring your favorite beverage, bring your snacks and we'll just sit around and chat and it should be a nice and fun relaxing time. So that is something special we want to do. Um, we also still have our ongoing Saturday weaving and spinning meetups with Vicky and then Mondays there are the knit meetups with Robin and so you can see all of those dates and times in the calendar. The link is right there and like I said here please join in on whichever Zoom meetups you can make in terms of time for for you so it doesn't have to be like you only bring knitting projects to the knitting meetup you can bring whatever projects you happen to be working on bring your weaving loom to the knitting meetup bring your crochet to the spinning and weaving meetup whatever you want to do so all of that is open for everyone thank you to Greta Greta's been posting all of the links in the chat so thank you so much for doing that The next thing I wanted to mention is about the community forums. So this is something that um, uh, Vicky and I, we very often every month, we've been doing these welcome calls and welcoming new members to the school. And every time we have this meeting, Vicky provides this very, very um, helpful tip, I think. And I wanted to remind everybody and share this with everybody. And so I've always talked about how the school is very much two sort of parts. One part of it is the content and the courses and all of that stuff is very, very important, of course, but that's one half of the school. The other half of the school is the community aspect. And so the community forums, this is where everybody, all the membership gets to jump in and chat with each other, discuss with each other, share with each other the things that they are thinking about and working on and going through and have questions about. It's a fantastic place to just hang out and spend time meeting each other. And so um, if you ever want to post anything in there, questions in there, Vicky and Robin are fabulous, fabulous community moderators. They're there every day uh, checking all of the posts. And if it's something that they, uh, they, they typically answer like all of the questions, but they will always kind of pull in um, various instructors if needed, and uh, you know, direct people, connect people to the answers that they might need. So Vicky and Robin, fantastic. You can feel very, very welcome when you come and post something in the forums. Um, however, the one thing that we do mention is that the forums can be a little bit overwhelming because we've been running since 2017, 2018. And so there are many, many, many posts in the forums. So I just counted, <laughs> I counted, I looked at the stats. The stats say that we have over 3,000 topics and uh, over 28,000 posts. And so there is no expectation for you to read 28,000 posts. There's just no way. And so Vicky has this tip that she likes to share with everybody. And that is when you go to the forums, if you're new to the site or anything, or you're feeling overwhelmed, the very first thing to do is just go to the top right hand corner. And there is a link that says mark site as read. And so when you click that link, it makes all of the forum posts look like you have uh, read everything. Um, so you don't have to worry about missing anything. If you need to, you can always search, you can always go into any one of those categories and read every post if you want. But 
all of that, clicking on that link just quiets the whole forum down for you. And then the next time you sign in, all you need to do is click on the other link that says unread content. And then from that point on, you can just read what are the five or 10 conversations that are happening today, right now. And then it allows you to feel a little bit more caught up with everything. And then you, you only have to come in and kind of listen in on the conversations that are happening right now. You don't have to listen to all 28,000 <laughs> conversations that have happened in the past. So that's a tip that I encourage you guys to adopt as well. Um, if you are feeling uh, sort of shocked by how much stuff is inside the forums. So yes, uh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Elena. The other thing I wanted to point out is there are some fantastic conversations and threads happening inside the forums. And so I just wanted to highlight a few of them. The one that I always try to uh, get everybody to take a look at is the share your wins thread, because that one is where members are posting projects that they've finished, um, successes that they've had, if they've learned something, all of that kind of stuff goes into the share your wins. So I encourage you guys to sort of pop in there and give some encouragement, you know, like really you know, take a look at what other people are making and just provide some support and positive encouragement. It's really, really, it feels really good to have received that. Um, there's also a very, very in-depth conversation going on right now about sock knitting and sock structures, uh, ribbing. Um, Tabitha has been posting like a photo tutorial in there. So that thread that's going on about sock knitting right now seems very intense. Um, there's also conversations happening in the crochet increases and decreases Q&A because the course has just uh, come out. And the double weave on Four Shafts Q&A thread is also very active, surprisingly active. The class hasn't even launched yet. And there's like 50 posts in that um, thread. So I encourage you to have a look at that as well. It's a lot of um, a lot of members sort of working through sampling, uh, sampling what kind of plain weave cloth they want prior to making the double weave project. So if you want to make a double weave blanket that's, you know, 45 inches wide or 48 inches wide, you want to make sure that your cloth is good. Um, and so you would do that by weaving like a small sample of your plain weave to make sure that, oh, this is a cloth that I want to extrapolate and make into a giant blanket. Make sure that your sample is good before you start. And so there's a lot of conversations about sampling right now in that double weave thread. Uh, we also started a little group here for Advent crafting. We understand that not everybody is making a uh, Sweet Georgia Advent sort of project, uh, but if you have picked up an Advent or like a holiday countdown project box from anywhere, you are welcome to bring that and just join in on the conversation there. It's really about crafting for the holidays and things like that. Um, and then there's a whole other thread going on about if you are crafting gifts for other people for the holidays. And so there's a conversation about that. I encourage you guys to join in. So yes, fantastic. Yeah, Marjoram saying that the forms are great even as a wallflower. There's there's a lot to just look at and be inspired by. Um, yeah, feel free to just lurk. <laughs> there is also a post by Amanda Buckley um, on the website in the blog section where she talks about sort of coming out of uh, coming out of lurking and participating in forums and things like that. But feel free to participate in as much as you feel like. So this is going to be about sort of the end of year review. And this one I'm thinking, this one is specifically about the school. And then I'll talk a little bit about like my personal sort of end of year review as well. But in terms of the school, I mean, when we do an end of year review, we're always asking sort of very general questions. What was good this past year? What was what worked out really, really well? What were we aiming to achieve? What was good? And then we talk about, well, what was really challenging? What was hard? What could we not do? <laughs> and then the last um, general bucket of ideas is like, well, what are we gonna do with all of this information for next year? How are we gonna make changes for next year? What are we gonna do next year? And so when I look at the school, this is kind of what was good. We published 23 new courses, and that's including study groups this past year. So that's like at li almost two every month. It's quite a bit. Um, surprisingly, 
surprisingly, we have the majority of our content for 2023 already filmed. It's already like production is done on all of those. And so now we're just waiting for post-production. So that is like Vicky, I mean, no, Leah is editing. We've also, um, Kathy has started to help us edit videos as well. So a lot of that is just all on film <laughs> and it's being, it's being edited right now. So we're really excited about that. That's one of the things that we wanted to do is we really wanted to get ahead of our content creation this past year. And so that has been huge. Um, we also hosted, it says in the calendars that we hosted 136 meetings and events this past year. So that includes Zoom meetings, uh, the meetups that we host, the live lectures, these live office hours, 136 meetings. Seems like a, a lot. <laughs> Um, and then in the discussion forums, we had 956 new topics started in the forums since January, since January until today, 956 new topics and over 23,000 reactions given in the forum. So that's like if somebody gives you a heart or a thumbs up or a like or a thanks or whatever it is, that's that's a lot. So I love seeing that kind of engagement happening inside the school. Um, I'm just really excited about the content that has been made over this past year. Just excited to see this whole school grow and the community grow and the community share and get to know each other more. The fact that we can recognize each other's names and know what everybody's working on. Like I absolutely love this. This is something that we talked about before, like really I have in the past, and I'm sure everybody's kind of experiences too, you know, feeling kind of like you want to join a community, but always kind of feeling like you're a little bit on the fringes or on the outside and you're not really, you're trying to find a way in, but you just feel like you don't fit. It's kind of like a uncomfortable feeling. And so I've always really, really wanted to make sure that this community feels super welcome, super inclusive, make sure that everybody feels like they're very welcome to be here, that we're excited that you're here. So that's what we're very much trying to create. So I hope that it's working. That's been good. What has been challenging? Um, a number of things. So this is something that I actually have not mentioned in public to anybody <laughs> to, in any of these spaces. And I really, really struggled with the idea of mentioning it even today um, because it's not like a it's not necessarily like a sad, sad thing, but at the time it was. So basically in January of this past year, we were given the news that, um, well, okay, so we moved into this studio space probably about a year and a half ago. And this studio space came after, um, after like years of looking for a new studio space. And then I spent about a year trying to apply for, um, uh, an artist workspace down on Granville Island. And then in that competition for the space, we came in second. Um, and it turns out that like having that space on Granville Island never would have worked for us anyways. It was just going to be way too small. And so this space that we are in right now with my office and the filming area and the dye studio and the retail space, like this amazing space that we have found and sort of renovated and built out and that we are in right now, we found out that a developer bought our building in January and they have decided that they are going to demolish the building at some point in time and so we need to look for a new studio space and so since January I like about maybe a third of my brain has been consumed with the need to find a new space to move all of us to and I'm not sure when that's going to happen I'm not sure when they're going to demolish this building. It might be like a year from now. It might be two and a half years from now. I don't know. Um, but I had hoped that we would be here for like forever, <laughs> but that's just not going to happen. And so I am very much in probably, I find myself probably in a very similar s situation to many of you, like wanting to weave, wanting to find places to put my loom, not knowing where I'm going to put my loom, not having enough space to put my loom. Like all of that kind of stuff is happening. And so this like alert, there's been a lot of questions this year about like, well, what do we, 
do um, about space? Do we split into two different groups? Do we, you know, have a school area? Do we have a dye studio area? Do we try to keep everybody together? So this has been a lot of stuff that I've been working through. And so that has definitely been challenging this year. Um, I don't know if that you guys have seen the video, but the, the video at the very beginning of the year where I talk about ordering the circular sock knitting machine, that came pretty much directly after I got the news that a developer bought our building. And so um, I wonder if you watch that video now, if you can see how kind of slightly distraught I was, that CSM was probably retail therapy for me in many ways. But in any case, like that has been a big challenge for this year. Um, so we're looking at that. The other second one is that we are constantly running out of video storage space. Um, we at the start of all of this filming, we were filming in 1080p. And then when 4K sort of became available, we're like, we're going to film everything in 4K and make it like future proof and make it absolutely amazing. Um, and then we started filming 4K for three camera shots uh, that were going to be like uh, multi cam shots. So, you know, if a course was going to be two hours finished, we might film for like, <laughs> 10 or 12 or 15 hours but then it was 15 hours from three cameras each with 4k footage and so we were just ending up with huge huge amounts of video that we would have to then cut down in order to make this little course um, and so this is like uh just phenomenal like how much video storage space we need so we had to make some changes for sure even vimeo like we host all of our videos for this on vimeo even vimeo reached out to us and said hey you're using way too much space so we've had to make a couple of changes as well so that is something that we're going to be working on for next year as well but that has been significantly uh challenging um and then finally kind of like figuring out the right balance of time spent between production and then the finished product or the finished course so like uh we just filmed the class with charlotte on tuesday and so that is great that's really super efficient you know they film for a whole day maybe about like say six hours five six hours and then that gets condensed down into a course that you can actually watch that'll be about two hours and all of that can be done on one day very very compact efficient sort of process with my double weave class I think I filmed 14 days worth of like weaving days, 14 production days. And then that all has to be like broken down and condensed into like this two hour little class. Um, and so weaving, teaching weaving is different than teaching cooking or teaching crochet or teaching knitting because all of those kinds of things can happen so quickly, but weaving the process is so long and it's so drawn out. And if I'm showing everything from winding a warp and threading and beaming and all of those kinds of things, then that whole production process is very, very long. So I'm trying to figure out um, a, a more effective way of presenting weaving content so that everybody knows what's going on, everybody gets all of the in-depth detail that they need, but at the same time, um, we can be more like compact and agile at our end. So this is something, again, that we're working through as well. Um, yeah. So these are the things that have been challenging for this year, but this is all solvable stuff. All of this stuff is workable, even the studio space. I appreciate everybody, your comments. Thank you so much. So next year, like we talked about in the last month's uh, live office hours, a lot of the stuff that we're gonna be focusing on is building content around, you know, helping you focus on your personal goals, your personal individual making goals, because the things that you wanna make are maybe different from the things that I wanna make, or maybe different from, you know, like what Greta or Vicky or anybody wants to make. We all are individuals coming to this community where we have the desire to make things, but maybe we don't have the desire to make the exact same thing. So I think that that's really, really important is to be able to identify what it is that you want to make. Um, and then a lot of conversation about organizing your own time and your own space, being able to become efficient to make the things that you want to make. And so like this space considerations, where are we going to put all these floor looms? <laughs> How am I going to like improve my attic so that I can fit all of these looms in my attic? Like a lot of conversations about how to 
best organize your space. Um, so everybody's going to do these things differently. And so that is uh, something to work through as well. And then finally, this idea about helping you focus on application, like how to design your own projects. And so I've been reading through a number of people's learning plans. Um, that's something that I really, really encourage everybody to look at as well. And uh, seeing in many people's learning plans that they want to be able to design their own projects. So that has been really uh, interesting to see. And it's definitely something that we want to support. The other thing that we talked about is that we want to do project galleries like to be, to be able to help you better share all of the projects that you've made. And so we're looking at a number of different ways to implement this feature, this project or portfolio feature in the school. And so this is just a screen grab of one of the possible options that we are looking at um, implementing. And so this would be kind of like a way for each individual member to create their own albums like you would make your weaving album and you could make your crochet album and your spinning album and then if somebody's coming into the spinning galleries then they'll see all of the photos of everybody's spinning photos but then they'll be able to see just like your own album as well so this is one of the possible options not sure that um this is what we're going to go with but it's just an idea that we're working through it's a prototype and if anybody has suggestions as well, we're totally in um, sort of a, a phase of exploring and researching and looking at different ideas. And so one of the ideas that we're talking about is should project galleries and photos be kept private to only members or should they be um, sort of open kind of like in an Instagram way where other people can also see your photos um, and not necessarily comment on your photos like the public wouldn't be able to comment on your photos but maybe they could at least see what you're making so this is stuff that we're also talking about and working through as well now for my own personal sort of end of year review again these are the questions that we've been asking like what's been good uh what's been challenging what are we going to do next year and so what i think has been good for me is like this past year i was able to focus pretty much exclusively on double weave for a whole year and i feel really solid about that one um i'm right now working through overshot and crackle and like looking at those weave structures and always looking at it in a way where how can i explain this to someone else how can i ex take this knowledge fresh knowledge and explain it to someone else so that they will also understand what's going on um because a lot of the information that is around overshot and crackle comes from these books from the 1930s and 40s and they need interpretation <laughs> they need deciphering because they don't all agree with each other either and this is the same thing that i discovered with double weave is that everybody does it differently there's no standard way of doing all of these things it's just best practices and so trying to like pull together all of these best practices in a way that i can communicate that with with you um, and help you through the process as well so that's been that's been really really good the other thing that's been good this year is like working with the studio to develop this entirely new color system for how we create all of our hand dyed yarns and so i feel like this is a foundation for so many things moving forward in the future like we have a color system we have a color wheel that we can pull from in order to make all of our future projects so really really excited about that um what's been challenging for me this past year is really kind of um realizing like really <laughs> really hit home really realizing that uh our time is very 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 short and um all of our time is very precious the time that we have with our family and friends is very short it's very precious the time that we have to spend at the loom is going to be very short the time that we have to spend with like the, the time that i have to spend with my kids right now in this moment as they are growing up as they are like actually interested in talking to me like all of this stuff is is still very short and so there is this balance that needs to happen between um time spent doing all of these different things and how where i place my value and where i place my priorities and so i feel like it's become extremely important to think about what is it about making that is so meaningful to you what are you going to spend time on that is going to be meaningful to you 
And that might be like making things for your kids or your partner or for yourself. It might mean that something meaningful is making things where you're learning something new. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out what is it about making that is meaningful to me. And a lot of that is around like making sure that I can create things that are my own design, that are my own ideas. It is expression. This is creative expression. This is trying to express things that you have in your brain, trying to translate them into a physical thing, whether anybody sees it or not. But it's translating ideas that you have and being able to chase those ideas down, follow your curiosity down to try to execute something that was in your brain. So that's very much where I want to spend a lot of my my making time next year as well um and so thinking a lot about this you know thinking about what to do next year i do want to focus more on all of these weave structures and be able to share those with everybody uh i want to focus more on using a lot of hand dyed yarn in the weaving projects and in knitting projects working with this color system that we've sort of developed um and also really intentionally and slowly building a very solid documentation system for myself, like a way of keeping all of this information. Um, and out of all of this, of course, we're going to develop courses and content from all of this. But that's kind of where a lot of my head is for next year. That's a lot of the things that I'm thinking about. Yeah, time and value is very, very difficult to sort out because whatever you're, and you say this, whatever you're saying yes to, you are saying no to something else. And so this is something that like I talked about in a conversation. We had these uh, Meet a Multicraftual Maker videos that we've done on YouTube. And I had this conversation with Madeline Windsor and she was a knitwear designer. You now she, I think she has three kids. And we talked a lot about like this trade-off between the time spent with your family Family versus the time you spend making things and then I recently had another conversation with Athena Chang also in the uh, also on that same series and she recently maybe about a year ago had her baby and so we had a whole conversation about that as well like sort of where do you find the joy in your making now I really encourage you to listen to that conversation it was it was so so great yeah, to listen to her talk about uh, where she was finding the joy in the making. And it was no longer necessarily in the finished product. It was in the process and chasing curiosity, chasing what am I interested in trying? What am I interested in learning? What am I interested in? And just, just being able to prove to yourself that you've learned that technique is enough to bring joy. It didn't have to be a thing at the end of the day. And so um, I found that whole conversation really, really enlightening i think to me as well so uh i definitely encourage you guys to also think through some of these questions for next year so these are the things that i have been doing recently and i encourage you to also to do this um you know talking about digital ways of documentation digital ways of planning versus analog ways i have really attempted to, to go back to using my bullet journal um for everything as an analog way of sitting down with a notebook and being much more quiet and much more thoughtful about the things that are going on, writing everything down. I tried to make like a digital version of my bullet journal, <laughs> um, but it just never had the same effect on making me more calm. So working with this analog format has been great so far. Um, this book I have brought up a couple of times, I think. It's called The Bullet Journal Method. It's by Ryder Kirk Carroll. And um, the first half of it describes how to actually do the bullet journal. So, you know, you're using the bullets and what is a what is what do all the symbols mean and all that kind of stuff and how to actually do it. But the second half of this book, um, I feel like is really, really great. Even if you don't do the bullet journal format or the method or the technique or whatever, the second half of this book is all about sort of being intentional, thinking about what it is that you value, what do you prioritize, what are your goals, uh, how do you how do you approach the world, how do you move into the world with, you know, gratitude or, you know, intentionality. Just a lot of that is in the second half of the book. And I reread this book almost every year. It's it's fantastic. So I encourage you guys, if you haven't had a look at this, give this a try as well. It's it's I love it. It's great. It's very, it's very relaxing. <laughs> um, the other thing that is, I mean, not just recommended in the book, it's something that I recommend all the time is just to kind of at this point in time of the year, just do this mental 
brain dump of all of the things that are on your mind, all of the things that are causing you stress, all the things that you're thinking about, all the things that you would like to make next year, everything that is a possible idea in your head, just put it all down on paper and then you can look at it. And then you can think about like, well, what is actually important to me here? Um, and so think about what are your values and your priorities? Like, is it is your value um, the satisfaction of having that finished object? Like the pride that you feel when you've made something like to look at? Um, or are you finding the joy in the process of making something, the process of learning something? Um, I know Athena and actually Charlotte brought this up too, like, part of their joy of making is that they were doing it together. They would get together and do it in person together um, and crafting together, doing that with others. That can be one of the big values of your making as well as that is as part of doing it in community. So think about all of that stuff. And then one of the other things is that kind of consider this balance of like, there's so many things that I want to do and then I expect to be able to achieve them all. And then when I can't, I get frustrated with myself. And so there's a sort of a, a, a balance where, you know, you can want things for yourself and you can try to get them. But if you don't get them, not to be so hard on yourself and to be really flexible with the entire process. So that is... Um, that is something as well to think about, just to be really kind to yourself with this entire process. We can want to learn things, we can want to achieve our goals, but just to find like a balance where you're not killing yourself for any of these things. Um, and then we encourage you guys to share about these in the learning plans as well. So we had one fabulous question that came in that I wanted to answer. And that was, again, it was related to these rose path blankets that we were weaving at the start of the year in the weaving twills on four shafts class. And so Nancy emailed me and she said, I'm brand new to this community and super excited. I'm about to start your rose path blankets. I have a counterbalance sinking shed loom. Your pattern was written for a rising shed. I know all I have to do is reverse the tie up. I'm still having problems visualizing this. Can you clarify? Do I keep the threading draft the same, but change the tie up? So yes, I wrote the patterns for rising shed because it seemed to be more common around here that everybody was using jack looms and uh, like baby wolf loom is a jack loom. So those are all rising shed looms. But you can see in this photograph here that I'm weaving the rose path blanket on a counterbalance loom, which is a sinking shed loom. But all I did was I just changed the tie up. I changed how I tied up the loom so that it would mimic the rising shed loom. So I'm going to show you here. These are the drafts. So this one here on the very left side, can you see my, yeah, there you go. Okay. If you can see my, my cursor here. So um, this is the original draft. This is the rose path threading. And then this is kind of your standard tie up. So tied up on one and two, two and three, three and four, four and one. So when I tie up these two, one and two for treadle number one, that will raise all of the warp ends on one and two. Okay. So the, when these black, these black dots indicate that they will be lifted up if I use the exact same threading and I tie up my sinking shed loom or counterbalance loom with like one and two, two and three, three and four, four and one, what will happen on a sinking shed loom is actually one and two will go down. Okay, so they will have the opposite effect. So I'm using the same threading, same tie up, but because it's a rising shed loom versus a sinking shed loom, it has a different effect on the cloth. And so hopefully you can kind of see, like if you look here, you can look at these kind of diagonal lines. These diagonal lines are all white. And then if you look over here on the second diagram in the middle here, these diagonal lines are magenta. Okay. So if you wove this one, this rising shed um, project on the rising shed loom, if you turn the cloth over, you would get this, okay? So your sinking shed loom, it will do the same thing. It's just like, it's just upside down. Um, and then uh, changing the tie up for the sinking shed loom will produce the same effect as the rising shed loom. So here you can see, I changed the tie up. So on a sinking shed loom, rather than tying up one and two, I'm tying up the opposite. I'm tying up 
all of these blank spaces. So I tied up three and four, making three and four come down, which, because it's a counterbalance, one and two would go up, having the same effect as the rising shed loom. So hopefully that is clear and makes sense. So if you're using a sinking shed loom with a rising shed draft, you just tie up the empty spaces in the tie up here. So here, rather than tying up one and two, I would tie up three and four. Um, yeah, ooh, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Yes? And so this is, again, what I recommend you guys, uh, I recommend that uh, if you can, please look at the multi-shaft weaving class. We talk about weaving drafts in there. Um, and also Laura Fry's lecture, the drafts and drafting lecture, also really, really important. So, so yeah, I, I would encourage you guys to study some of these drafts and try and draw them out by hand because that has been the greatest thing ever is to learn how to draw weaving drafts by hand. So let's look at the projects that you guys have posted. So this one, I love the things that Catherine has woven. Catherine has been posting many, many beautiful things in the forums over the past couple of years, and they're all beautiful, colorful, and um, she's woven these radiant towels previously in plain weave, I believe, but then she wove a bunch of hawk towels, which were also gorgeous. And so now I think she just received a new loom, the Louette Spring 2, and so she's just getting to know the loom, and so she put on a 14 and a half yard warp um, using sort of the radiant towels pattern threading, sort of, but then she's uh, weaving this with a huck uh, weave structure. So these towels are gorgeous, and so I had to show two photos of this because they're so pretty. So that's what they look like on the loom. So stunning, so beautiful. Um, and so we are going to look at Huck next year with Laura Fry. Very, very excited about that. But this is, yeah, super fun. You can have a look at this thread because um, Catherine actually has a number of really, really gorgeous photos that you can check out. This one, Jessica. Jessica has used hand painted tensile yarn as her warp. And she said it was dyed in a palindrome sequence. And then she uh, wove it into a wall hanging using hand spun as weft. It's amazing. Like, again, if you go to this link, you'll be able to see all of the photos of the close ups of the texture of the yarn, of the weaving. But she's used tabby, she's used twill, she's used sumac. And then this middle part of the warp, she just kind of like advanced the warp and didn't weave any of that section so that she could create this swoopy, drapey look but it's beautiful and just very striking i feel like there's yeah so much that you could do with this there's so much that you could play with so this is really really lovely so i appreciate you for sharing that thank you jessica we also have in here marjoram is in the chat here today as well but marjoram he is the recipient of our um, first ever school of sweet georgia scholarship um and so that was a program that we started uh, at the beginning of this past year um, and it is really to like help kickstart somebody who's in the fiber arts and just really help them help them on this journey and so we can just see the immense amount of um, sort of learning and posts that have come out from Marjoram and Marjoram's also making videos as well. So again, I encourage you guys to follow some of these threads because they um, they link to videos that he's created about the process of making some of these things. But he's dying, or sorry, they are dyeing yarn and uh, they are weaving and uh, learning so many, so many things. So I have here this um, scarf, these finished scarves with the hound's tooth and then also on the loom um hand dyed yarn being woven into scarves so yeah i encourage you to check out the projects here they are fantastic so many so many beautiful things to look at so thank you so much for sharing marjoram thank you we also have a pair of socks here shown by Alyssa. and these socks are really interesting i kept looking at them because they are combining two different colors they use lace in them and there's intarsia going on because you're joining the two different colors in the sock and so this is all happening um 
And uh, yeah, so there is also the link to the pattern on Ravelry if you wanted to make these same socks. So that's very, very uh, fun and interesting to do. We have not done any intarsia so far in the school. And so that might be something that we have to look at in the future, depending on if anybody is interested in intarsia and learning more about intarsia. Um, but yeah, the lace in here is really, really lovely and there's a lot of sock knitters in the school. We talk a lot about knitting socks. This one is Rachel Kay's shawl. So this one is called the Hamrick shawl and uh, says that it took three skeins of DK weight yarn. Um, this was yarn that was purchased uh, from Alaska as souvenir yarn. It was on a trip and, and so really, really fun. But I wanted to highlight this particular shawl pattern because it seems like it would be a great one for doing um, working with hand spun yarn, hand dyed yarn, combining different colors, gradient sock lengths. There's a lot about this shawl that's just like, uh, just would be really, really usable for many different circumstances. So I encourage you guys to go take a look at, Rachel has a finished photo as well of the shawl. So it's, it's fantastic. Thank you. And then as always, I like to show first hand spun yarn. And so this is Samantha's first two ply yarn, looking very nice and squishy, all these colors mixing and blending together. Again, this is something that is just absolutely not possible through hand dyeing. This is something that only happens if you spin your own yarn. So fantastic, beautiful, beautiful hand spun yarn there. I also wanted to share, this one was probably from before it's been like probably more than a month but i wanted to show these to you because these are juliet's uh csm socks she has please go to the thread <laughs> she has many photos and the photos are fantastic because they show her entire process from the fiber to uh, blending the fiber into beautifully colored rolags and then spinning the yarn and then cranking this on her uh, circular sock knitting machine. So this is a 1917 Gerhard uh, circular sock knitting machine that she has and so she says here that she spun the yarn the singles fine enough in order to make a four ply sock yarn and then she cranked these socks that I believe she's mentioned that she cranks the socks from the toe up and then uh, using sort of like it looks like a river uh, she's added the river on and then done some things there so you can see her entire process on the thread but you can also see there's another um pair of socks that she's made as well and it's absolutely gorgeous the photo collages are fantastic so i encourage you guys to check those out finally we always do a giveaway every month for these and so that is the link to the giveaway school of sweet live 2022 december oh dec not december DEC. <laughs> so that is the link for the giveaway. And it just, we basically just ask a couple of questions like, what was helpful to you for this session? What would you put into practice? Um, because we really just like to know if the live office hours are helpful to you and how we can make improvements on them in the future. But the giveaway, I believe, is going to be a gift card. I think. Bridget can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I think that that's what it's going to be. But there will be something that we will give you. <laughs> And that is basically it for today. Thank you so much for being a part of the school, being a part of the school for this year, for spending time with us, for just, again, yeah, really, truly bringing your light to the community. Because when you bring things and you share and you even talk about the things that you're working on, the things that you're interested in, it gets everybody else excited and interested. And it's just been amazing to watch this community grow and to see everyone sharing together and showing each other what they can do and it's sort of inspiring each other to to do new things as well so thank you so much for being part of the school thank you so much to the school team the sweet georgia team greta today and vicky um thank you for being on the on the chat to help everybody with the questions and things like that um let me know if anybody had any questions um because 
the chat has moved and I can't see the questions anymore. So let me know if there were any questions today that I can help answer. Um, let me move this over here and then I'm going to scroll through really quickly to see if there was any questions that I can help answer as well. Question, wanted to ask you if you have worked with 5-2 Ashford cotton, what set would you recommend? Because I want to weave double weave bread wag with a 5-2 cotton. So yes, indeed. So 5-2 cotton, this is actually 5-2 cotton. This is the 5-2 mercerized cotton from Ashford. I use this for double weave. Um, and each side, I was doing it at uh, 16 ends per inch is what I used for this. It was slayed four ends in a eight dent reed. And that worked out really, really, really nicely. It makes a nice plain weave cloth. Very, very colorful. Yeah, so that will work really nicely. Um, let's see if there are any other questions about these things. Yeah, fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope that you will join us on December 12th for the holiday sort of get together and then we can chat more casually. This is always very one one way and it would be nice to just sit in a room and chat together and share what we're making. So I hope that you guys will join us there. Thank you so much for being here today. I will see you guys on December 12th. All right. Bye for now.